morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio, so today we need to take a look at which cards from Pokemon card 151, Scarlet and Violet 151, as it's known in the West, which cards you need. We need to know which cards you need to be picking up, so I'm coming back with my buy list. Now, the way I do my buy list, personally, is cards that I think you need to have in your binder so you are prepared for any deck you need to make. I'm not listing off that you should go and buy the main attacker of every deck, because I always think that's a decision for you guys to make. So, if you think you want to go and build Blastoise, go buy a place out of Blastoise, but that's only good if you want to build Blastoise. Same thing with Electrode. These are specific decks you know if you want to play them or not. If you think there's an decent chance you're going to be playing these decks, absolutely go and pick them up. Wiggles is one I'm going to definitely be going for because I think that's great. But unless you think you're going to be playing them, I'm always a fan of kind of waiting to see how good they actually end up being and waiting to see what my testing brings out before I actually go and commit to buying a big heap of cards. Good? Good. What we're focusing on here, as far as I am concerned at least, is cards that may end up being good in multiple decks or cards that you need in your binder just in case. So let's start off, let's go in order, let's start off with the Pokemon, and let's start off with Charmander. And I know it's a Charmander, and it's rather unexciting, but it's got 70 HP. Simple as that. And it's the only, well, we haven't until now had a Charmander with 70 HP, and Charizard's really good right now, so you're going to need one. For what it's worth, there is the promo Charmander as well that also has 70 HP, and has a more damaging second attack but you're rarely going to use it, and honestly, discarding a stadium for one energy is probably going to be more useful most of the time. Now, Sandshrew is not exactly a powerhouse card, but I think you are going to need a couple of Sandshrew, because it's got an extremely useful ability, which says that trainer cards in your opponent's discard pile cannot be put back into their deck by an effect of item or supporter cards. Basically, your opponent cannot get any trainer cards back, which is going to stop a bunch of decks, that is something you're going to need. Speaking of basic Pokemon with useful abilities, Zubat. Zubat is another one which I basically think exactly the same thing about. What we've got from Zubat is an ability, if it's active, you can make your opponent reveal their hand. You can look at their hand. And okay, it's a 40 HP liability, granted, but that's still a very useful ability you may need at some point. So I'm putting it on the list. Hypno has got an ability whereby when you evolve into it, automatic sleep. Simple as that. And you know what? This is going to be very, very useful in a whole bunch of decks. And that's why it gets in. Obviously, in the context of 151, it's great with Jinx. That gets an automatic KO on anything that's asleep. But it's really just a useful ability that you can pop into a bunch of decks. Now, Chansey is one that some of you have already bought four copies of and some of you think I'm an idiot for suggesting, but it's got the ability Lucky Bonus. If you draw it as a face-down prize card, then you can put it on your bench and flip a coin, and if heads, you take an extra prize. Take an extra prize is good. I'm going to be testing this in a bunch of decks. Starmie is one you should be thinking a little bit about as well. It's got an interesting ability that lets you discard it while putting two damage counts on one of your opponent's Pokémon. But the fact is, we've seen plenty of decks that want Pokemon in your discard pile. Extra damage is all of good. Add that up, you've got a very useful Pokemon. Now, Mr. Mime is a very interesting one. Like the Charmander I showed you a minute ago, there is an artwork rare or an illustration rare of this. And it's by Okacheke, which means it's amazing. But basically, it's got an ability that prevents all damage done by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon that have the same number of energy as Mr. Mime. There are a lot of control decks and other decks that are either going to build around something like this, or even just use this to buy a turn or two in the late game. If your opponent just doesn't have any more energy to attach, you can basically whack Mr. Mime up and be like, ha, gutted, now you can't attack and I know you're out of energy, you can't attach an extra energy, I'm immune for the game. One of the ones I think is personally most important here is Ditto. Ditto's got the phenomenal ability that lets you search your deck for another basic while discarding Ditto. 
yeah, brilliant. I mean, again, for, for decks that want lots of Pokemon in your discard, this is great. But it also means if there's a basic you really want to start with, play four Ditto as well, and you've essentially got eight of that basic. Now, Aerodactyl is one I don't really like recommending because it's a fossil. I think both Omastar and Kabutops have great abilities, but as stage two fossils, I'm not going there. But Aerodactyl is a stage one fossil that for two energy can basically do 100 damage while devolving your opponent's evolution Pokemon, and this KOs a lot at the moment, and I think this can fit into a lot of decks. Now, Snorlax is a weird one, because the ability just puts two leftovers from your discard into your hand. So if you want to use leftovers a lot, or you're, say, playing an Electrode deck where you need to discard lots of tools, Electrode is not the first that's done that, it won't be the last, then yeah, it's phenomenal. If you don't want leftovers, this Snorlax is kind of terrible, but I think there are enough decks that either want tools generally or leftovers specifically that this one could be good. Zapdos, I don't generally like suggesting buying EXs where I can help it because they're a little more expensive than your average card, but the fact of the matter is this should be a one-off in every Lightning deck moving forward. If it's got Lightning Energy attached, it's got free retreats, and for free energy, you do 120 to the active, 90 to one of your opponent's bench that's already got damage on. Yeah, absolute no-brainer here, ladies and gentlemen. Great in every Lightning deck. And then finally, Mew. Yeah, it's another EX. Don't care. You need at least two of these. You probably need four. Mew is a borderline broken card. Mew is one of those cards that is so good, we are going to be seeing it in three to six proper archetypes at all times. This is always going to be a staple in multiple archetypes. Because you've got free retreat, an ability that draws so you've got three cards in your hand, and an attack for free colorless energy that chooses one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and just copies it. Mew is ridiculous. It is going to see a ridiculous amount of play. You need two to four of these. You have no choice. I'm sorry. It is going to be impressive if you can get through the next couple of years and never put Mew EX into a deck. Now, moving into trainers, generally, I think you need four of most of these, but I do think there are a few exceptions. Now, obviously, Big Air Balloon gives free retreat to a Stage 2. It's only good in Stage 2 decks, but it's great in Stage 2 decks, and if you ever play a Stage 2 deck in the next couple of years, you're going to need it. Bill's Transfer... Look at the top eight cards of your deck, find any Pokemon you find there and put them into your hand. In Pokemon Hungry decks, this could end up being pretty gosh darn good. Cycling Road lets you discard an energy from your hand and draw a card. Good for decks that want energy in the discard. Good for decks that like drawing cards. This one again should see a large amount of play. Daisy's help, I'm putting it two to four copies. You draw two cards, look at your face down prizes. It's probably a card you're only going to play once during the game, and then maybe you play two in case one's prized. But we've seen, you know, world champions in the past who have been like, I need to know what's in my prizes, I'll play town map in every deck. This lets you know what's in your prizes, that is big. Energy sticker, I'm a huge fan of this. Flip a coin if heads attach a basic energy from your discard to one of your bench. Universal energy acceleration, albeit inconsistent. Still love it. Still testing it a bunch. Now, Erica's Invitation is another two to four of, and another one that's got an amazing special illustration rare. It lets you grab a basic Pokemon from your opponent's hand and switch it with their active. Yeah, basically attacking a Pokemon in the hand. But again, you're unlikely to use this more than once or twice a game. And I feel exactly the same about Giovanni's Charisma. You get an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon into their hand, and then from your hand to your active Pokemon. Not an every turn supporter for sure, but then again, you never know what deck's going to be played in the future now, do you? Now, Grabber is a card that might see no play or might be really good in some particular decks. Look at your opponent's hand, find a Pokemon and put it to the bottom of their deck. Certainly in control decks, this could be good. I'd recommend having four in your binder. Now, leftovers can be really good with Snorlax, but then again, it can also be really good on its own. Because at the end of your turn, you heal 20 damage if it's your active Pokemon. Healing is good. Some decks can absolutely make use of this. Protective Goggles takes away weakness from basic Pokemon. If you're playing a basic deck and your opponent's trying to go after you with weakness, this is clearly going to be busted. You need four of those. And then finally, another tool, Rigid Band. It is a tool card that says that the stage one it's attached to takes 30 less damage from attacks. If you're playing stage ones and you don't think you're going to get one hit KO'd, 
or you're worried about getting one hit KO'd, basically it's good in stage one decks. Unless you're definitely getting one hit KO'd or definitely getting two hit KO'd regardless, and that will occasionally be the case, I admit. Yeah, you're going to need this. It's going to be awesome. This is a set which is very much a themed set. It is there as a kind of, hey, remember how cool the first run of Pokemon was? Yeah, let's make a set about that. But that doesn't mean there aren't very good cards in here. And some of them, I admit, are slightly fringier cards. Something like Sanctuary is not going to be good in every deck, but it's a very useful tech. But then you've got stuff like Mew or Protective Goggles that I think could end up helping a whole bunch of decks. That's what I think. But I want to know what you think. Is there a card on here you don't think should be on the list? Is there a card that isn't on the list that you think should be on the list? Let me know in the comment section, would you? Good us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and, well, a whole bunch of other fun things. But a lot of Pokemon. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And of course, get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Eric Ridgway, who's been a supporter of ours for a very long time, and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.